My brothers and sisters, two times in today's second reading, St. Paul mentions equality. Equality. Now, just what does he mean by equality, do you think? Well, to begin with, I'm immediately reminded that God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And I believe that this truth is never more obvious than it is than when it comes to the question concerning equality. Now let's just consider the events in today's gospel, for instance. Well, first of all, the man who first approached Jesus was a pretty important fellow. He's an official, a VIP from the synagogue, who's actually important enough to be referred to by his name, Jairus. And so it's no wonder that Jesus doesn't hesitate to stop in the middle of his important work and go off with Jairus to heal his daughter, right? But then, before you know it, there's another interruption. And Jesus once again stops to attend to another person's need. But this one, on the other hand, is a nobody. An outcast, actually, with several problems stacked against her. First of all, she's a woman in those days. And not only that, but she's barred from the temple as being unclean because of her flow of blood. She's poor, and she isn't even referred to by a name. And yet, once again, Jesus stops his important work and incredibly tends to her need with the same compassion and concern with which he responded to Jairus' need. So what are you and I to learn then from the amazing example that Jesus gives us in today's gospel account? Well, let's just take another look at, at it and see. Well, first of all, we all know that Jesus isn't answering Jairus' request for help because Jairus is a VIP, don't we? That's just not like Jesus. But rather, he sees standing before him a frightened and desperate parent who's begging for help for his little girl that he loves so much and fears that he's about to lose her. And so, sisters and brothers, what can you and I learn from Jesus in today's gospel? Well, we can learn the meaning of love without conditions. We can learn that no matter how popular or unpopular we are, no matter how important or unimportant we are in the eyes of the world, no matter how strange or different our looks, our customs, or our beliefs, or even our social standing, there is always one who will stop to notice us and to attend to our need with great care with great love and wonderful compassion. We learn from today's gospel that even if we are chronic losers and everything we do ends in failure, if our mind or our body is failing, if our talents are buried or misunderstood, and yes, even if our lives seem to be slowly hemorrhaging away. Deep down, we know that Jesus sees us all as precious daughters and sons of God. 
we learn from this gospel that to him will never be nobodies because he knows each and every one of us by our name. We learn from him that even if one if he, even if everyone doesn't care for us, we learn that if no one cares for us, ever rewards our efforts or lets us know that we count, that Jesus will always have mercy on our nothingness and care for our bleeding. He always affirms us and assures us your faith can heal you. This gospel shows us that even if everyone around us gives up on us, thinks that we're too far gone or too much of a sinner or too dead, we know that Jesus will ignore them all. Enter into the place where we live, take us by the hand and raise us up to a new life. You see, in today's story about Jairus and the hemorrhaging woman, most everyone just gives in to fear, desperation, or despair in the face of sickness and death. However, the writer Robert F. Capon puts it this way. Jesus came to raise the dead. The only qualification for the gift of the gospel is to be dead. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be wise. You don't have to be wonderful. You don't have to be anything. You just have to be dead. That's it. Sisters and brothers, this should give you and me great cause for hope and joy. We don't have to be virtuous or worthy or even spiritually alive for Jesus to raise us up. In fact, it would seem that the more unacceptable the more of an outcast or the more hurt or lost or dead that we are, the more he cares. And therein lies the equality of God. Let's consider the following story. There was a news story on TV one day about a heroic mother who had single-handedly raised a large family. In spite of all the frustrations, disappointments, and obstacles, she had made remarkable achievements, not only in their schooling, but also in her children's vocations. It was an inspiring story worth celebrating, for it revealed both the heights and the depths of human greatness. But during the interview, the mother was asked her secret by the reporter, who said, I suppose you loved all your children equally, making sure that all got the same treatment, right? The mother's answer was awesome, striking at the very heart of today's gospel. She replied, I love them all, each one of them but not equally. I loved the one the most that was down until he was up. I loved the one the most that was weak until she was strong. I loved the one the most that was hurt until he was healed. And I loved the one the most that was lost until she was found. My friends, Jesus' response always arises from our Father's unconditional love. 
However, it's not a love based on the kind of equality that we would normally expect to see. But rather, it's a love that actually does discriminate. God discriminates on the basis of need. God discriminates on the basis of need. Remember, Jesus came to bring good news to the poor, to give sight to the blind, to cure the sick, to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus came to raise the dead to new life. Whatever our needs may be, Jesus is always ready to graciously supply them that there may be equality.